My wife Kathy went to college in Kalamazoo and for years she's been saying we need to go back there and spend a weekend, that it's a really cool place and I never understood why until now. Kalamazoo is an awesome city that's big enough to have that urban feel but still small enough to be just plain comfortable. Located in the middle of southwest lower Michigan's rolling hills, Kalamazoo is halfway between Detroit and Chicago right off I-94. Now in 1959, Kalamazoo opened the first downtown walking mall in America. Now it's a collection of cool businesses, shops, and great restaurants. You can come explore for the weekend or buy one of the new loft condos downtown and stay a while. Now if home living is the life for you, check out the historic Stewart and Henderson Park neighborhoods right in town. There's no grids here, just rolling hills of curvy streets lined with breathtakingly beautiful homes. What gives the town a lot of its intellectual energy and its rhythm are the two great places of higher learning here. There's prestigious Kalamazoo College, which is the oldest private college in Michigan, and of course, Western Michigan University, home of the Broncos. Now one of my personal favorite things about Keizu are the incredible building murals that they have here. Most of them are created and painted by a local artist named Conrad Kaufman. They give the city a funky urban soul and a really inviting sense of place. They're very cool. But the main reason we're in Kalamazoo is to see a place that's just south of town. What? Oh, sorry. It's called the Air Zoo, and it really is a one-of-a-kind destination. It was actually voted the best place to take somebody visiting from out of town. And in just a moment, you'll find out why. So sit down, strap in, hang on, and get ready for a wild ride. Our guide for the day is Air Zoo President and CEO Bob Ellis. Bob took a few minutes out of his very busy day to tell me just how it all started. This place came about uh, because of about 10 years ago, we seriously looked at the lives that we were affecting. And it was, it was a small number because most people that came to the Aviation Museum at that time were people that already knew the story. They were aviators, they were aviation enthusiasts, people mm -hmm. loved to fly, read all the books. Right. And so they came out and looked at the bunch of wonderful airplanes, but they didn't leave with anything more than they came with. With Bob's vision and hard work, the Air Zoo really has become a great place for the entire family. Bob went on to tell me that the Air Zoo has over 50 rare and historical aircraft, full motion flight simulators, and a breathtaking 4D theater that takes you right back to World War II. There's indoor amusement park rides and the Guinness World Record largest indoor mural ever painted, and it's all under one roof. You've combined a theme park with an aviation museum, so it's educational, it's fun, it's good for any age, but you've taken it to the next level. Because like I said, I've been to a lot of aviation museums and there's nothing like this anywhere in the country. Next, I took off in the 3D space shuttle ride. If you're ready, let's try it out. Okay, we're ready, shut the door, light them up. It's a simulator where you blast off from planet Earth and travel all the way up to the International Space Station. The experience was incredible. After a successful landing in the space shuttle, thank you very much, I decided to try one of the full motion flight simulators. It's like you're really flying and you can pick from a whole bunch of different kinds of airplanes. You know me, I pick the fastest. Okay, maybe not the fastest, but Bob showed us the Air Zoo's real speed champion. Start out by saying this is the world's only SR-71B and it's on loan to us from the United States Air Force Museum. And clearly, the Air Zoo is a place where we can showcase the Air Force, and so they were pleased to offer it to us, and we were certainly excited to take it. The SR-71s first flew in 1962. They're still the fastest and the highest flying air-breathing airplane in the world today. And if you can imagine, from there to there, it's gone three miles. Wow. I'm talking about 2,200 miles an hour at 85,000 feet. Amazing. Now this is the incredible 4D Missions Theater. It's an actual 4D experience that you've got to try out. Let's go inside. This attraction is a total trip on the senses. You'll see, smell, hear, and even feel what it was really like to fly a bombing mission during World War II. I gotta be honest, Bob, this is one of the most unusual planes I've ever seen. The propellers on the back side of the plane, is it supposed to be there or was this an accident? Well, this was no accident. It, it's supposed to be there. This is the world's only Curtis XP-55 Ascender. One of a kind. One of a kind. It belongs to the Smithsonian Institution and it was designed to create a breakthrough in aviation back in 1941. 
So swept wings, pusher, you know, canard up front. How many were made? There were three built. The first one crashed very early. The third one crashed at an air show following World War II. Oh my II, gosh. And the sole survivors here. Now talk about the ultimate aircraft, at least for me. When I walked in this building, one of the first things I saw was this aircraft. And this is, to me, this totally romanticizes the whole experience of flight. This is a beautiful, tell me about this airplane. 1947, Grumman Mallard. You can go anywhere in the world with it. No airports around, as many as there are today anyway. So you had lakes and rivers and streams. And this airplane could take you there. It belonged to a gentleman that uh, actually has a resort out in Monument Valley, and he decided to donate it to a museum. Three months later, he flew it in, and it's still airworthy. You could fly it. To it still flies? It still flies. Can we fly it? Well, let me think about that for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Bob thought about it, and his answer was no. But he did let me ride zero G. It gives you the feeling of weightlessness. Whoa. And I'm sure it also gave my crew the feeling of hilarity Whoa. as they pointed and laughed at me. Remind me not to go into space. Oh, yeah. Now, my most challenging flight experience of the day also turned out to be, well, the most fun. It's a ride called Spaceball, and it really oh shows you how astronauts oh train for the weightlessness environment oh of space. God. Tell my wife I love her. I think I lost the filling. OK, that's good. Once my head finally cleared, Bob took a few minutes to tell me about all the great people and volunteers that work at the Air Zoo. I noticed you have a lot of volunteers here that look like they may have been veterans. What do they add to the experience and how valuable are they? Tom, I can't overemphasize the fact that that is the experience. We have the real people that flew those objects and in combat. And it's a real experience for young people to get to talk to these guys that aren't gonna be around forever but it's a living experience. What a great day at the zoo, so to speak. The Air Zoo is a wonderful place to take the entire family. You'll get lost in both the history and the future of flight, and you'll also learn a ton too. So now that the Air Zoo is no longer under my radar, I'll be back for sure. I'm Tom Dalton from Under the Radar, Michigan. Hello. You know, I love the internet. I mean, I really love the internet. And one thing I really, really love about the internet is that you can take it almost anywhere you go. Why look, I've got it here with me now. But I'm here today to talk to you about an epidemic that's sweeping our country. An epidemic so huge, it's turning our American minds to mush. I'm talking about, that's right, wasting the internet. Sure, you can watch a dancing chicken wearing a hat or a whistling dog on the internet. There's all kinds of silly mindless stuff out there. But honestly, is that what the internet was really designed for? Of course not. The internet is the information superhighway, for gosh sakes. So next time you're on the internet, go to utrmichigan.com. You'll find links and information on all the great people, places, and things that we discover right here in Michigan. Or if you're a social networking kind of person like me and you'd like to be a part of the program, go to our Facebook page at Under the Radar Michigan. There you can suggest people, places, and things you'd like to see us feature on the program. We'd love to hear from you. So please. Oh, <clears throat> so please, stop wasting the internet. Go to utrmichigan.com today. You'll be glad you did. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also in part by the Food Bank Council of Michigan, Michigan's statewide food bank network committed to the alleviation of hunger in Michigan and in our nation. The Food Bank Council of Michigan gathers food and funds to help stock Michigan's food banks. And by Moose Jaw, a Michigan retailer whose stores and employees serve the outdoor enthusiast with clothing and gear. Information on locations and gear at moosejaw.com. Closed captioning for Under the Radar Michigan is made possible by Shamrock Travel in downtown Rochester. Shamrock Travel providing complete travel services right here in Michigan for over 20 years.